Hey, we're back. It's all done and dusted. All four have been judged. And a bit of a highlight actually, in my last image to be judged, one of the judges picked up on that narrative pretty clearly and scored at 88 and challenged up the other judges from low 80s, mid 70s up to an 84. So that's absolutely awesome. Um, look, I'm not too fussed about the score. 84, yeah, well, yeah that's, that's, that's good. That's a good score, but it's not about the score. Well, it's not anymore. It was this morning, but it's not about the score anymore. It's about, I was really, my first three images really struggled for the judges to interpret them, to pick up on the emotion or any content or any narrative whatsoever. And given that that's something that I've really made a main priority in the last four, five, six years, creating emotive stories with strong personal narrative. I was extremely disappointed that these images weren't talking to the judges pretty much on any level at all. So the fact that, wow, like one judge in the last panel of five, only the one judge in that last panel of five picked up on it is such a blessing for me and really turned my day around and turned my belief around in, in this particular series. Look, I don't think it would have made that big a difference after I let the time go by. And, you know, as I said in the previous video, doubts are good. It's good to doubt, to really solidify if this is the way that I want to take this particular body of work. And to be honest, this body of work, the reason I didn't enter it in the States was because I felt it was really young and rather hadn't matured yet. So I wanted to give it that extra two, three months to mature and it has matured but I still think it's a very young body of work that needs to be worked a little bit more. So I'm looking forward to getting into a studio space in the next two or three months and I want to experiment with cyanotype and uh, platinum style old school darkroom kind of printing techniques and hand tinting and hand toning and hand colouring uh, these images to get that feeling and emotion but what I'm really excited about is I really want to craft these images myself with my own hands I think I've been missing that you know the cameras these days are so incredible you essentially within the first couple of months or, or, or six months or so you really got those settings and whatnot dialed down so it's a case of pressing the button wow that's a pretty good image great and then you run it through Photoshop and you might do a few presets and a few actions and a few this and that and look, I like to add more personal touch to my images than just a preset or two, but how much of that, my own craftsmanship is really going into my work. I'm pressing a button, I'm applying a few Photoshop filters, and then I send it off to my printer, as incredible as Paul Jarvis is over in Perth there, Perth Pro Lab. You know, I want to take control of some of that artistry and some of that craftsmanship and take the level of communication through this series from start right through to finish so the images I'm using are a very blurry plastic horrible lens but it's producing these very ethereal foggy blurry images which really sit, suit the story that I'm trying to tell really well because within the anxiety and depression if you've ever experienced it you might have also experienced the fog um, and the lack of clarity within your thought process that that comes with. So I've got, you know, that's working for me. And then I've used the crayon drawing to add an element of carefree. You know, a lot of the depression and anxiety in my world comes from concerns, worries, stresses, expectations, you know, and what other people think. So I added the crayons as a sort of a I don't care what you think, you know, and I've seen my, the way my little boy draws and he draws with a carefree, relaxed, happy nature and I wanted to add that and that's the reason why it's there. But I think once I get into the studio and I start creating these works, you know, bringing them up from the negative initially through the cyanotype or whichever process I decide and then hand toning them and hand colouring them, they're really going to start building up and I'm going to get a lot more clarity about how to tell this story on a much more refined personal level. Now I think the drawing over the top is going to stay. 
Whether it stays on all the images of the exhibition, I don't know. And whether it stays in all crayon, I don't know. I do like the idea, particularly for the rainbow image, of that somber black and white image and then painting over the top with a really vibrant, rich, saturated set of oil paints to create that rainbow. Maybe sort of dripping down the canvas to a certain degree, I don't know, but that's going to be all the experiment and the fun and it's going to be incredible and I'm, I'm hoping to document that and, and show you all my failures because there's going to be a lot of failures. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done it before. I've never done cyanotype or platinum printing and it's extraordinarily complex complex from what I've seen. But the fun and the experimentation of not knowing what's going to happen, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun. And seeing this exhibition come together literally before my eyes, that will be a reward in itself. So I guess although the results didn't go my way today, they're good. Three silvers is a very good result. Nothing to be sneezed at. I was hoping for more, don't get me wrong. But that's a very good result. But at the end of the day, the real positive that I get from that is I'm getting a real clarity and um, around the thought process and about where to go next. And look, I'm not going to force myself to stay here or stay with the style. I just want it to develop into what it's supposed to be. I read a great, great quote yesterday. Um, I can't remember who the quote was from, but the quote was, do what you're supposed to do and you'll end up where you're supposed to be. And look, it sounds simple, but if you're anything like me, you won't know what you're supposed to do. So through that experimentation and trial and error, I'm looking forward to ending up where I'm supposed to be. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes APA from my perspective. It was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I was disappointed, no doubt about it. And I'm sure as, as the, day, the next couple of days go past, I'll have moments of disappointment and, and self-doubt more so again, but I'll end up, the body of work will end up where it's supposed to be, I think. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.